We know if we direct two nuclei towards each other, since they both have a positive charge, they're going to repel each other according to the Coulombic interaction. What this means is at low speeds, each of them will lose energy to the electric field and slow down. And then they will gain that energy back, which causes them to fly away from each other. So we start off with two hydrogen nuclei, and we finish with two hydrogen nuclei. This is rather boring. However, there's something interesting that happens. If we consider the separation of the nuclear particles, or nucleons, we know that for the positive charges, they're going to follow Coulomb's law, which is a 1 over r squared relationship. But there's another force that becomes very important, and that is the strong force. The strong force is a short-range force, and a typical nucleon separation, it's very, very attractive. And the end result is in the red area here, our nucleons can attract each other. And so if we go back to our earlier situation, we will take two isotopes of hydrogen, hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 3. We will shoot them towards each other very, very quickly, and they will fuse. They will fuse into the unstable nucleus, helium-5. Helium-5 will then fall apart, and it will make helium-4, the common form of helium we know, and that also leaves one neutron. When forming atomic nuclei, we can consider the amount of energy required to hold the nucleus together as a function of the atomic number. And if we plot this, what we find is that there's a few very interesting spikes that occur. One of the key points on this graph is iron 56, which amasses at the center of all high mass stars. We also see that there's a spike for oxygen 16 and a spike for carbon 12, which are essential for life. And finally, there's a little spike at helium 4, which means that it shows up fairly often when we consider nuclear fusion. We're well aware of the idea of conservation of mass, and conservation of mass tells us that the total mass that we started with and the total mass that we finished with should be the same. In this case, we had deuterium and tritium, two isotopes of hydrogen, and we finished with helium-4 plus one neutron. When we take the mass of all of those, look at what's happening on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we find that we actually have a slight discrepancy. The two sides are not equal. And the reason for that is that we're not actually interested in the conservation of mass. We're interested in the conservation of energy. And when it comes to the conservation of energy, it is now time to consider Einstein's famous equation that E is equal to mc squared. That is, energy and mass are the same thing. You can convert energy to mass and mass to energy. In this case, we've lost a little bit of mass. So if we consider the amount of mass that's been lost, we're going to be able to calculate how much energy should have been released by the loss of that mass. And the energy that's released in this reaction is approximately 16.8 mega electron volts. And this is the energy that fuses all stars, at least in their early stages, and is the primary driver of our sun. The production of these videos has been generously supported by the Nova Scotia Teachers Union through the Program Development Assistance Fund.